Okay, um, today we will be talking about um, a rather sensitive um, topic, but I think an important one uh, nonetheless. Uh, today's session will be um, aimed at providing some some insightful uh, insightful perspective um, from a man's way of thinking um, and experience as to why women, um, why your your value decreases with time in a man's perception or to a man um, generally in the marketplace. Again, <laughs> a very a very sensitive a sensitive uh, topic to 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 discuss. But let me start, if I may, let me start with um, a few general um, statements. We all know, and we will all agree, irrespective of who you are and where you are, we all agree that every life has value and that every life has an intrinsic value. We would all agree that under the law that we have equality in our rights, certainly in this country, um, we have equality of rights. We are equal under the law. Um, there is equality of opportunity, largely. Um, we are equal in the sight of God, whether you believe in a, in a deity or you don't. And all of those are fundamental to how we interact as a society. Um, so this conversation that I'm about to have does not in any way take away uh, your intrinsic uh, value as an individual. That's not what I'm dealing with here. I'm dealing with a very specific, uh, practical uh, perspective that applies to specific marketplaces. So keep that in mind as I, as I move forward. Um, I am not in any way suggesting that uh, a woman's value uh, decreases in the sight of God. I am not suggesting that the woman's value decreases in the sight of her loved ones and her family and her friends. Of course, over time, relationally, people get to know who you are and your value increases. Um, I am specific, specifically going to be talking about um, why men generally perceive that a woman's value decreases with time. Um, and I hope, I hope that perhaps from today's session that there are some useful uh, insights. Now let's begin. I made reference to to the idea that uh, men are cost-benefit calculators. Calculators. Um, well, we are always looking for what we stand to gain based on the price we have to pay. So generally, from a man's perspective, we are always thinking in relation to the price versus value, because price and value have a relationship. Um, value is what you get. The cost or the price is what you pay. Both are not always the same. Sometimes price equals value. Sometimes price is less than value. And sometimes the price you pay is greater than the value. So for most men, um, what we look at is the overall purchase cost. And by purchase cost, I'm referring to resources, time, emotions. This is primarily what we, what we deal with. Our resources, our time, our emotions. Certainly our presence um, and any other resource we bring. And what we're looking to ensure is that what we get in return is equal to or greater than um, the price we pay. So for a, for a woman, and let me speak again to the category uh, of women I'm referring to here and the category of men. You've heard me say before um, that I'm not dealing with every single man because every man 
it's different. Uh, we men are not, we're not a monolith. We're not all the same. We have a difference in tastes, values, morals, goals, dreams, ambitions, preferences. And therefore, individually, what we wish for and what we want will vary. But in, in statistics, there's something called the law of large numbers. The law of large numbers states that if you have a small sample size of, say, 10 men, there is a higher likelihood that amongst the 10 men you would find a deviation in their preferences. If you increase the sample size to 100,000 men, you start to notice that there is something called an average and that the average would represent most of the men. If you increase the sample size to 10 million, then that average increases. So what you then have is like a normal distribution amongst all the men. So the, the larger the sample size, um, the greater the plausibility that the average is correct because the standard error or what we call the standard deviation, uh, the standard error is much less. Um, now let me make, <laughs> okay, I guess I'm not trying to make this, a, I'm not trying to make this a, like some statistical uh, class or observation, but let me, let me show you how this works in principle. Um, if the sample size is 10, typically what you find is um, there's something called the standard error. The standard error means or um, implies that if you take the sample size and you take the square root of the sample size n, that would give you the standard error, in which case for, for a size of 10, what you're looking at is square root of 10. Square, the inverse of the square root of 10 gives you 31.6%, uh, which means that the error, whatever I may have said about 10 men, you have an error of about 31.6%. Now let's move to step two, 100,000 men. So you have 100,000, the square root of 100,000, the inverse of that. And what you get is that for 100,000 men, uh, the standard error in principle reduces. And this is, this is significant because the number reduces drastically. This becomes 0 0.3 one six percent can you see the difference it's a huge difference now if you go to 10 million men what you find is that the number increases even more um, and, and therefore the standard error um, becomes almost so little that it, it's it's next to insignificant. Uh, bear with me, I'm just, I'm doing the numbers now, uh, just so I can present it to you. Um, so let me go back a step. 100,000 inverse times 100. Yeah, okay, so 10 million. I wasn't intending to do this, but I think it's a useful way to begin today's session. Um, what you find is that the standard error here is 0.0316%. And what that means is that whatever you obtain as the average, the larger the sample size is very likely correct. So keep that in mind. Now let's, let's move forward. Um, let's say we're starting with the question as to um, the value of a woman in relation to time and age. In the marketplace, in this marketplace, we're referring to a man or men. And this man is of a certain socioeconomic status. He's in the marketplace looking for, seeking a wife. Not looking to date, but this would also cover even men looking to date because um, in terms of the relational process, it begins from introduction uh, to conversation, to communication, uh, to intimacy or sex, you develop a relationship, then it moves to a commitment, commitment phase, 
dedication phase in their marriage. But let's just assume that you have a group of men in the marketplace looking for women for whatever reason, whether that be for casual relationships or whether that be for long-term relationships or whether that be a as a life partner. I would not question their intentions, but just assume that men are in the market and women are also in the market. In the marketplace, women are gatekeepers to their buddies. They decide who they give the key to. So they have the key to their buddies. They decide who they have sex with. They decide who they get intimate with. And they decide who they reproduce for. Very important statement to make. However, when it comes to getting married, men are the gatekeepers to marriage and long-term relationships. We get to decide who we choose. We get to choose. Ladies, you present yourself to us, but we get to choose. Two distinct roles. We hold the key to marriage and relationships. We decide who we give our last name. We decide who we call our wives. We decide who we choose. So you have very two distinct roles. Um, I mentioned in one of the previous session a concept of how to understand the categories of value. I started by saying that um, there were four specific core value systems. Uh, I call this the categories of value for a woman from a man's perspective. The first I called your economic intrinsic value. Um, please forgive me for the nature of my handwriting. I, I'm trying to write as fast as I can. Um, so if it doesn't come out well or if there are errors, um, just take it as it is. Um, secondly, we have what we call your sexual marketplace value or your sexual market value. The third is your non-sexual market value. And the fourth is your reproductive fertility value. This is what we judge in relation to value systems. I read, I referred to something that I, I said needed to be understood by women, which is that your economic intrinsic value means very little to men of certain socioeconomic status. We, we really don't care. And this simply means that your education, your profession, your wealth, the money you have, is not considered. We do not consider, consider that when we evaluate your value. The reason for that is because the man predominantly is the provider. And so we come to the relationship knowing that we are the ones who will provide. So we do not look at how much you've made. We do not look at your education. We do not look at your professional status. We do not look at your family wealth. We simply come with the responsibility on our shoulders. So once you eliminate the first, the question then is, okay, does that mean that the remaining three is all men look at? And I mentioned in one of the previous uh, sessions that there are only two of the three that are left that are fundamentally important at the initial stage. I stated in one of the previous sessions that um, when it comes to uh, dating, there are different stages that men um, have in mind. One is the introduction stage. The second is the com communication or conversation stage. Next is intimacy and sex. Intimacy for the woman. The men are primarily focused on sex. Number four is the relationship. Number five is commitment. Number six is dedication. And number seven is marriage. This is the traditional stages the men have in mind. Your sexual marketplace value and your reproductive fertility value are the only two 
value systems that a man looks at. Predominantly for all stages. During the introduction, communication, intimacy, the man focuses on your sexual marketplace value, on your reproductive value. But as he moves down into marriage, he starts to think about your non-sexual marketplace value. But men are visual, so we judge first by what we see. Once we've judged by what we've seen, which is where your sexual marketplace value comes in, the next question we ask is if we're going to move beyond stage three, which is just sex. Like, it's important to understand, ladies, um, you can have a good character. You can have uh, well-behaved manners. You may have been raised very feminine. Uh, you may have been raised into a good family. You may have all the qualities that makes your non-sexual marketplace value very high. However, during the first three stages of a relationship, the man does not necessarily care. If a man wants sex, the man will sleep with a woman who has terrible character and a woman who has terrible value systems and a woman who is not raised properly. Because all he wants is sex. He doesn't care if your attitude is poor, he doesn't care if you're loud and obnoxious. If he finds you attractive and he wants to have sex with you, that's all he cares about. So we overlook your non-sexual marketplace value most of the time, especially between stage one and stage three. Your non-sexual marketplace value comes into play if we decide we're going beyond stage three into stage four or more. However, because we're very visual, we always place your non-sexual marketplace value as the last or the least important thing. So it's always your sexual marketplace value and your reproductive fertility value. If the man wants to have children, this is the second thing he cares about, which has to do with your age. So with everything I've said so far, what that means is that your SMV plus your RFV equals your value to a man between stage one to three and even going to stage four. Now, your SMV plus your RFV plus your non-sexual marketplace value will make your value between stage four and seven. Your non-sexual marketplace value starts to become a lot more important if the man really is considering you for marriage. If he's looking for a short-term relationship, then he doesn't care too much about that. If he's not looking to have kids with you, he doesn't care too much about that. So the main focus, therefore, is your sexual marketplace value. And your sexual marketplace value, I described it in one of the prior sessions, and I said, it really has to do with your visual aesthetics, your aesthetics as a woman, how you look. It has to do with um, both your intrinsic attributes and attributes that you've actually worked on. So we're looking at your height, we're looking at your size, and we're looking at the clothes you wear, we're looking at your face primarily and your body. Whilst looking at this, with two questions come to our mind, how natural are you and what level of enhancement do you wear? The more enhancement you have, whether this, this, uh, this um, refers to uh, cosmetic surgery, um, whether this has to do with you know, whether you have any form of fake features, fake hair, fake nails, fake eyelashes, fake breasts, uh, fake bum, um, everything fake. The more enhancement you use, the less your value. And the reason is simply because the man gets you in your purest form first thing in the morning. You know, you're the woman he sees. And so we judge your value based on how you look first thing in the morning, before your makeup, before you have a shower, that's what we see. That is the real you. Um, if you took out every single 
blemish and every single spot and every single enhancement you have. That is the real you. Your beautiful clothes, your lovely high heels. Take all of that off your jewelry. Take out all the makeup. That is the natural you. And that is what we score in relation to your sexual marketplace value. So when we say that a man says a woman is an eight, a nine, or a 10, he is referring to how you look in your natural state without enhancement. Now, even if you've had enhancement, plastic surgery, we have to look past that because in principle, your enhancement um, augments your beauty. And not everyone is enhanced. So we tend to look at you in your natural state. Now, what this means is that to a man, your sexual marketplace value and your reproductive fertility value are the two areas that we focus on. Okay, so the question is, why is it that as a woman ages, her value reduces? It's a very simple uh, concept. It has nothing to do with you. We're not saying you're not valuable as a person. We're simply saying in the marketplace, nature, unfortunately, has set up what we call an unfair advantage. Nature has set up this system whereby we have a double standard. Unfortunately, the double standard favors men in relation to aesthetics than it does women. Because as a man, as a man ages, the man is not judged based on his looks. The man is judged based on his ability to provide and protect. Unfortunately, the woman is judged not based on what she's able to produce, but based on how she looks because men are visual. Now, what this means is that um, as a woman ages, time plays its, what we call a favorite number on every one of us. I made reference to a category or categorization um, of age, of ages for women. And this is important to understand why um, your reproductive fertility va value decreases with time. And also I'll use a different concept to explain why your sexual marketplace value um, decreases with time. But let me begin with your reproductive fertility value, because I think um, that that is something most of you um, could relate to, and I hope um, that you do. In the age categories, we have 18 to 22, uh, 23 to 27, uh, 28 to 32, and then we have 33 to 35. And then we have 35 and above. Your reproductive fertility value decreases with age, primarily because as a young woman, you are the most fertile in this age category. As a matter of fact, 20 is where most um, medical professions, professionals will tell you. Um, if you go to the Royal, um, I think it's the Royal College of uh, gynecologists and obstetricians, they will tell you that 20 years is when you have um, the most fertile and the most quantity of eggs, female eggs. So... But as you age, the quantity of your eggs starts to de decrease and the quality of your eggs starts to decline. Now, this is a very hard, difficult conversation, especially coming from a man. But please, um, do me a favor. If you don't like the messenger, just close your eyes and listen to the resident speak. Don't worry too much that is coming from a man as opposed to a woman. Um, focus more on the message rather than the messenger. Between 18 and 22, you have five years. Between 23 and 27, you have five years. 
28 to 32, you have five years. 35 to thir 33 to 35, you have three years. So in total, you have 18 years. So from age 18, you have 18 years in order for you to make the most important decisions um, that are necessary for you to be uh, certain that one, you have a family, and if you want to have kids, you have healthy kids. What this means is that if you divide five by 18, we call this stage one and stage two, stage three and stage four. Stage one means that you will use up 28% of your value. Five divided by 18 is 28%. So by the end of the first stage, ladies, you've lost 28% of your value your reproductive fertility value. By the end of the second stage, you've lost 28% of your value. So combined, you've lost 56% of your value. Less, you've lost more than half of your reproductive fertility value. By the end of age uh, stage three, you've lost another 28%, which takes you up to 84% of your value. And lastly, by the end of stage four, you have lost 16% of your value, which brings you to 100%. Now, the reason we stop at 35 is because, according to the Royal Institute of um, Gynecologists and Obstetricians in the United Kingdom, and across all medical professions across the world, we have something called high-risk pregnancy or geriatric uh, pregnancy. And that begins from 35 and above. Ladies are, are recommended and it's, they're advised that the risk to the mother and the risk to the baby increases from 36 and above. And between 36 and 41, uh, you have high risk pregnancy and, and it increases exponentially beyond 41. So um, any decision that has to be made has to be made very early. Technically, what this also means is that from a man's perspective, the way men would rank a woman is if you're 18 to 22, your reproductive fertility value, men will score you between an 8 and a 10. we we'll score you between an eight, 7 and an 8 if you're 23 to 27. we we'll score you between a 5 and a 6 if you're 28 to 32. And then we we'll score you between a 3 and a 4 if you're 33 to 35. Above 35, you're less than a 4. Sorry, you're less than a 3. Pretty much you're a 2, if we're going to be, uh, be accurate in, on the numbering system. So, women who are 36 and above, yes, you can have kids. Um, but the number of kids you can have is restricted. Plus, the risk complications are enhanced. For that reason, men generally perceive, especially men who want to have a family and then want to have more than one children, we see the value of a woman dropping in proportion to her age. There is a positive correlation between your age and your reproductive fertility value. That correlation is inversely related. So the higher you go in age, the less you are in value. Now keep that in mind. On the opposite side, we have your sexual marketplace value. Your sexual marketplace value is simply based on your aesthetics. We judge that based on what we see. We're very visual men, and we give a score from zero uh, to 10 based on observation. The scoring we, we apply varies. We look at your face and the whole idea that beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Whilst it sounds good and it sounds um, possible, in reality, it is not the case. There is a subjective component to beauty and there is an objective component to beauty. We see that in buildings all over London. There are buildings that are very beautiful that date back to the Georgian 
the Victorian, the Edwardian period. There are buildings that go way, all the way back to the Smith and Mary period. There are buildings that go all the way back to the Jacobian period. We call these period buildings. They're classical buildings. They're old. They were constructed hundreds and hundreds of years ago, but they are beautiful. Not all of them, some of them. Such buildings, although they are old, are considered to be more beautiful than modern buildings. So, and that, that position is one that is shared by the consensus. So you have an objective standard, but you also have a subjective component. However, in the marketplace, because men are the ones who decide, uh, I think this is perhaps something that ladies do not appreciate. When a man chooses a woman on her looks, the man does not choose the woman based on what he deems to be beautiful. This is a fascinating conversation. We, we refer to this as second level and third level mate selection. The first level is the man sees the woman and he says, I like her. She's pretty in my eyes. He chooses the woman. Now, he might choose the woman for sex. Or he might choose her for intimacy. That is first level. But because we are part of a market, or part of a community, the same man recognises that his sense of self-worth, self-esteem, self-recognition, is not exclusive to the group. So what men generally will do is move down to the second level and ask, Assuming these are women, which of these women do most of the men consider to be beautiful? So the men usually have an objective and a subjective component to beauty. Their subjective is the first level. That's what they want, because that's their preference. The objective is the second and third level. This is where they say, what would men, or what do the men think? In which case, when they choose a woman, they're also choosing a woman that they subjectively feel is attractive, but also objectively they recognize that other men believe to be attractive. A classical way to understand this is, first of all, bring in a group of men and put a number of women in front of the men. If 10 of the men come in and say, the three of them are ugly. If the 11th person who finds the three women attractive walks into the same room and he starts to communicate with the men and they all say, the three of them 